The reason I say that is Megan is beautiful, like gorgeous. But when she was four years old, she was in the back of my car. But I had these white pantyhose in the back seat of my car. And she takes them out of the package and she puts them on her arm and she goes, Mommy, I'm beautiful now, just like you. One thing to say to you in response to what you apologized for earlier, you talked about your two beautiful daughters. You apologized on behalf of white people. On behalf of every white person who ever discounted you, I apologize. For every company that passed you by because of the ignorance of them, because of the color of your skin, I apologize. For every time we spoke ignorance out of our mouth because we didn't even know what we didn't even know, I apologize. Because as a mother raising two African-American women, I am offended how they're treated because of their color of their skin, because of the wave of their hair, because of their fullness of their lips. I'm offended. And I have to take responsibility for that for my culture, because my culture is too afraid to say something. But I'm standing here with my sisters and brothers in this room that are of any other nationality, skin color, to say we love you. We adore you. And if we could do it all over again, we'd do it all over again and make it right. And I just want to respond and say that you are the perfect example for your daughters. Mm. You're also the perfect example for us. You don't need to apologize. You're not them. You're a part of us. Yeah. Know that. I love you. I love you. Free yourself from that. You are not that. Don't ever do that again. You're not that. I know I'm not that, but I stand with people who have been that for you. And I would be irresponsible for my community who would never have the courage, who would never let their ego or their she-go be humble enough to fall at your feet and ask for forgiveness. Because I know when you do that, when we do that, when our community does that, miracles happen. And if I can be the voice for everyone who's afraid to, it gives them courage and power to do that. Yes. And I know that and I appreciate you and I celebrate you for acknowledging me in that. And you apologized and said you couldn't be that for your daughters. Don't shrink who you are. You are that for your daughters. Thank you. The reason I say that is Megan is beautiful. Like, Gorgeous. But when she was four years old, she was in the back of my car. But I had these white pantyhose in the back seat of my car. And she takes them out of the package and she puts them on her arm and she goes, Mommy, I'm beautiful now, just like you. And I'm like, oh, hell. That was my ignorance of I'm, no, I'm, I'm enough of a woman. I'm going to be the best mom I can be. I, like, I don't care what anybody says. Because people would go, you married a black man? What about the children? But then I came up against prejudice. I came up against people judging my babies for the color of their skin. Not only adults, but little kids. Like people you know, they were in a Christian school and they were coming up against that. So I'm like, oh, hell no. So in that moment, I'm like, I looked around the school and there was nothing but white faculty. Now, I just wanted my kids to have a godly education. I wanted to give them a strong foundation. But when I look what I put them in the middle of, all they saw was pretty, was blonde, was fair, was white. And I'm like, I have done my children a disservice. And at that time, they're three and five. And I started looking at my community like, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? But in the beginning, you weren't saying yes. So I, that's when I started looking for like women of color that embraced me and accepted me yes. for my journey and loved me anyway. And it wasn't until I met Lisa, she was standing on stage and she had this big hair and her full lips. 
and her round hips. Like, and she's just like, and I'm like, oh my God, I love her. And she, they, you know, some of don't judge me for the color of my skin or the fullness of my lips or the, you know, the kink in my hair. And in that moment, I started bawling. I'm like, that's what my children need to see. Because beauty is in all of us. Doesn't matter what color we are. Doesn't matter what shade we are. Doesn't matter the texture of our hair. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You're brilliant. Oh, oh. So I wanted my babies to feel that, know that, own that. I don't want them to put some white stocking on because I'm mama's white. I wanted them to celebrate all colors so that when they walked into the room, I don't care what you think of me because I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm a force to be reckoned with. That's why I apologize. Because I experienced it just like you experienced and I only experienced this much. I'm clear. I'm not saying my journey has been the same. It's been this much. This much. My daughter's at Wharton Business School. She did an internship for an investment banking firm. And the man took her aside and he said, listen, you're brilliant and you're a black woman. And your path is going to be different than the white boy or the white girl that comes in up behind you. So you better, you better have your game in play. You better outshine, outstand, because the minute you walk in that door with your color skin, your hair, it's a different ball game. Yes. This was last year. Oh. Right. Now, as a mama, she was telling me that story. Ooh. Mm. But in that moment, I realized what a blessing. I've been telling her that her whole life. What a blessing this man is to go, you do you, but you know, like you do you, but we have the same kind of prejudice. Cause if you're beautiful, if you're sassy, you're not smart, right? Or you're just a commodity. I'm more than a commodity. I'm a good commodity, but I'm more than a commodity. I'm a package. <laughs> <laughs>